Hi, my name is Clinton Erling, and I'm the president of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The Chamber's Business Review is an informative weekly television magazine of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We will showcase the activities of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, feature interviews of prominent business personalities, and broadcast our popular training seminars for the entire country's benefit. So please sit back and enjoy while we indulge your attention over the next half an hour. Let me, on behalf of the Executive, Council and Member of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, welcome you to the Security Seminar today. My name is Lance Hines. I'm the Senior Vice President of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Chair of these morning's proceedings. Uh, the Chamber believes that this issue is probably one of the most cross-cutting uh, matters affecting many sectors in our environment. There should be no disagreement on the fact that how we work, how we play, how we learn, how we spend, and even invest is driven in most instances by the level of comfort we have in the safety and security of our immediate and extended environment. Maintaining an acceptable level of security is a constant challenge throughout the region, not just here, and even further afield. Crime has become a continuously evolving, varied, multidisciplinary, complex beast. These challenges put significant demands and resources that we, are really, we all really would prefer be applied to more productive and developmental areas. We at the GCCI believe, therefore, that this challenge must be imaginative, collective, and collaborative. This, therefore, is the genesis of today's event. It is for us to use this opportunity to see where we are, to get an idea of the various initiatives in the public and private sector. Hopefully, time permitting, we can also look at further ways of brain sharing and collaboration. Based on the agenda, this promises to be a most informative session, and we at the Chamber believe the beginning of many fruitful discussions of this nature. Thank you again, and welcome to the seminar. Now on to the agenda. Our next the speaker is no stranger to us. He's been a minister since 1992 and has served in probably two of the most critical portfolios in government, Foreign Affairs first, and for the past seven years as Minister of Home Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce the Minister of Home Affairs, Honorable Kremen Glory, to make a few remarks. So I'm very grateful for the invitation to speak at this seminar, given the fact that it is aimed at addressing issues with respect to security. You may not know it, but the private sector is all over the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Home Affairs Ministry has become very open ever since I assumed the portfolio in September of 2006. On all the interviewing panels, to hire persons to work in the ministry, there is a representative from the private sector who sit on the interviewing panel to interview prospective employees to the various branches under the Ministry of Home Affairs. We have also representatives visiting regularly to speak with the task forces that have been established by cabinet, task force on smuggling and contraband, and a task force on drugs and illegal firearms. We invite representatives from the private sector to engage regularly with these two task forces to share their experiences with us and to tell us exactly how we can help them <coughs> in the furtherance of their business activities. We also have representatives from the private sector on a number of bodies under the Guyana Prison Service, the Guyana Fire Service, and the Guyana Police Force. We also have representatives of the private sector on what is called the Board of the Crime and Social Observatory which is an integral part of the Citizen Security Program. So that 
the private sector is by action and by deeds a partner of the government in the security sector. So we just only we don't talk about partnership with the private sector, partnering with the private sector, the security sector. They are an integral part. They are a partner, a living partner with the Ministry of Home Affairs in the private sector. And we listen attentively to what they have to say and to advise us. Now, obviously, not every piece of advice is accepted, but there are other pieces of advice that we find acceptable. And so, given the merits and the demerits of the advice, based on our peculiarities in the security sector, we would take this advice and implement it as far as we could. I thought I should say that because sometimes people <coughs> believe that government only talk about partnering with the private sector. And it only happens on a sporadic basis. For us, it is not a sporadic exercise. It is an ongoing, sustainable, living exercise, which we go through every day. The security, public safety and security of our country is very broad and wide ranging. And some people see this only as a crime situation. Some people see public safety and security only through the prism of crime. But this is not so. Public safety and security is a much broader concept embracing not only crime, whether it be detection of crime or prevention of crime, but all issues pertaining to law and order, all issues pertaining to ensuring that the peace and good order is maintained in our country. And that is why so many institutions, I would say, institutional arrangements fall under home affairs the police, the prison, the fire, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit, the General Register Office, the Police Complaints Authority. These are critical institutions that have to do with safety and security of our country. And not only Georgetown, which is called a division in the police configuration of their divisional arrangement, but the entire country, stretching from one extreme part of the country to the other extreme part of the country as well. And so it is a very large undertaking, and that's why Home Affairs comes under such great scrutiny by persons who have an interest in security matters. We recognize the the importance of the role of the private sector as we go about our day-to-day -day business. And while it is true that the private sector may not have representatives in every nook and cranny of Guyana, they are centrally located in the capital city, but there are branches of the private sector in the regional chambers of commerce in various parts of the country. But the fact of the matter is the policies are formulated in the capital city. And the private sector forms part and parcel of the formulation of the policies. And those policies are implemented throughout the length and breadth of Guyana. Our next item on the agenda is uh, a present, uh, I would say a series of presentations uh, by the technical team of the Ministry of Home Affairs. Um, that will start with Mr. Floyd Levi, who will who will present to us on the integrated crime information system that is currently in operation at the Ghana Police Force. Mr. Levi. The government of Ghana entered into agreement with the IDB many years ago to start a program called the Citizen Security Program, which was aimed mainly 
at reforming the Guyana Police Force as well as the Ministry of Home Affairs and some of the other agencies within the security sector. A major initiative of this program was uh, the Integrated Crime Information System, um, of which I will speak on this morning. And very importantly, the Integrated Crime Information System is a technological innovation to assist the law enforcement agencies, primarily the Police Force, in making operational decisions and the Ministry of Home Affairs in developing policies to assist the security sector. Um, as we alluded to earlier, the integrated crime information system is data-driven and technologically driven. Now, one aspect of the integrated crime information system is the data collection and dissemination amongst the agencies. However, later on in the series of presentations, my colleague, Mr. Clement Henry, will speak on the analysis of information collected from the integrated crime information system under his presentation on the Crime Observatory. Why integrated? The integrated crime information system brings in a lot of the agencies that you see here on the slide. Um, it's not only the Guyana Police Force, but we collaborate with, and in many instances, collect information from the agencies seen here. Um, you could very well understand why we'd have the Director of Public Prosecutions as part of the system, Magistrates and Supreme Court, Prison Service, and the other agencies. To give you a pictorial overview, and I will explain the system on this slide, um, what we have in place is a computer network connecting all police stations, primarily across the coast, we are across the coastline of Guyana. We are um, at Springlands, all the way to Charity on the coast, and as far south as Linden and Bartica. We have some challenges in the interior, as those of you in the private sector can well imagine, in terms of setting up a data communications network in the interior. Um, but we have managed to capture or managed to install our network in the major population center of Guyana. What you're seeing here on the, well, let's start from the top left-hand side, are, well, let's start from the top. Police stations connected by computers using um, a network, data network provided by GTNT, connecting to data centers located located at the Guyana Police Force as well as the Ministry of Home Affairs. We have a redundant system where the data is collected immediately once you enter it on the computer to both data centers. So if the system goes down, our data is not lost. No data is kept on the computers at stations. So from police stations, sub division headquarters, division headquarters, um, for, for those of you who understand the police um, organization, information is fed to the data center and, and is accessible by the major units within force headquarters. Um, immigration, special branch, force control, CID, TSU, commission of police, and his other senior officers. At the Ministry of Home Affairs, this same information is analyzed, as I said before, for policy purposes, to de for development of policy and high level initiatives and interventions. Over here, on the right of the slide, these are the agencies with which um, we collaborate electronically. Um, GRA, NIS, DPP, all the way down to Ghana Prison Service, which of course um, falls under the Ministry of Home Affairs. And we believe this is a comprehensive network which will provide us with the data necessary um, for Prime analysis. This is what a crime lab looks like. Basically, we have a map with points on the map showing various types of crimes. Each icon represents a different type of crime. This is what we're trying to achieve at the end of this project. Now, why do we need a crime map? First of all, we want to integrate crime data with demographic data. And eventually we want to see patterns coming out in where these crimes are occurring so that we can identify areas of concern. 
our aim is to move to a point where we're doing proactive policing rather than reactive policing. So we want to get to the point where we try to anticipate um, where crime will occur rather than just reacting to a crime that has already occurred. Now we're going to try to make predictions about where these crimes are occurring. And in order to make these predict predictions, we must first understand crime itself. Now we will turn to 